side and angle relationships of isosceles triangles. In an isosceles triangle, the angles opposite the two congruent sides are also congruent. So in this triangle, we see that side LM is congruent to side NM. And these little tick marks that we see on each side indicate that those sides are congruent. The angles that are across from those sides, angle N and angle L, are also congruent to each other. So the measurement of angle L is equal to the measurement of angle N. We can use this information to help us write and solve equations to determine the values of X and Y in an isosceles triangle. Let's look at this one to the right. We're given the values of two angles and two sides. We need to determine the values of X and Y. X is the value associated with the angles, so let's start there. Since side RS is congruent to side TS, and we can tell this because of those little tick marks right there, that also means the angles opposite those angles are congruent. So angle R is congruent to angle T, which means the measurement of angle R equals the measurement of angle T. If we look in the angles, I can see that the measure of angle R is 35. So that's what I'm going to write, 35 equals, and then the measure of angle T is 7x degrees. So that's what I'm going to write for the measure of angle T. Now we have an equation and we all know how to solve this. We're going to divide each side by 7, remembering to keep it balanced. Whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. And so 35 divided by 7 is 5, and 7x divided by 7 is just x. So x equals 5 degrees, and we have solved for x, but we still have to solve for the value of y. So if we look up at the triangle again, we see a y is given to us on one of the sides. And because it's an isosceles triangle and then we see those two tick marks, we know that side RS is congruent to side TS, which means their measurements equal each other. So that means the one side, Y minus 1.7, is equal to the other side with the tick mark, 6.8. And so again, we're, we have an equation and we know how to solve this. I'm going to add 1.7 to both sides, keeping it balanced. Minus 1.7 plus 1.7 cancels out, so we just have y equals, and then 7 plus 8 is 15. Carry the 1, and that's 8, and we can't forget our decimal. So y is 8.5, and then we have to look back and see what the unit of measurement was for the side. It was centimeters. So y is 8.5 centimeters. Now this one, I'm going to get you started, but then I'm going to ask you to finish on your own. We need to write and solve equations to determine the values of x and y in the figure. And so let's just start with x. Well, I notice that this is an isosceles triangle, and I see these tick marks here, which means um, that both of those sides are congruent. And so the angles across from those sides will also be congruent. So that means that 12x is equal to 72 degrees. And then if I look at the sides, because I know that those two sides with the tick marks are congruent, that means their measurements will equal each other. So y plus 2 fourths equals 4 and 3 fourths. So now you have both of the equations, you just need to solve them. Go ahead and do those on your own and we'll check them to, uh, together in class. And then once you finish this, move on to the next video which is side and angle relationships of equilateral triangles.